Mic check, mic check. Test one, two. Good morning. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration at Our Lady of Guadalupe Parish and Shrine. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome to those listening through Facebook. The Mass intention is for the soul of Luis Gabriel Romero by Greg and Veronica Bryant, for the soul of Richard Brown by Irma Lechuga, and also for the souls of Francisco and Virginia Bonilla by Armando and Alicia Bonilla. The entrance song today is Mind Set on Jesus. Our principal celebrant is Father Freddy. Assisting him today is Deacon Ricardo and our acolyte, Billy. Thank you and have a great day. Don't you know that I woke up this morning with my the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, we are here to celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. It's Sunday in which we are reminded who are our friends and our allies in this walk with our Lord. Before we begin, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie, Kyrie, 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifests your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasure of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. 
The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses, taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So, when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The, the precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. Though you servant is careful of them, very diligent in keeping them. Yet who can detect failings? Cleanse me from my unknown faults. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. From wanton sin especially, restrain your servant. Let it not rule over me, then shall I be blameless and innocent of serious sin. The, the precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and well over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away. Your clothes have become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have eroded. And that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like fire. You have stored up treasures for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. 
You have lived on this earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is, is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, we surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worms does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, there was once a couple, a very holy, poor couple, who had just recently had a baby, and they ran out of baby formula. They also had a neighbor who was not nothing like y'all. This neighbor was nosy. Metiche, we might say, in everybody's business. And another detail about this neighbor is he was also a satanic participer. He believed in Satan. So one day, the nosy neighbor hears this holy, poor couple asking God, Lord, we've run out of baby formula for the month. We have a few weeks left till the next paycheck, and we really need that baby formula. Lord, please bless us with that baby formula. The nosy neighbor hearing this says, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out, buy the baby formula, put it on their footsteps, knock on their door, have them open the door, say, Thank God that, they brought, that he brought us this baby formula, and I'm going to jump out of the bushes and say, Ha, you idiots, it was me. So he did exactly that. He goes, buys the baby formula, puts it on their door, knocks on their door. They open the door, and they grab the baby formula, and they say, Praise God that he heard us out. The neighbor jumps out and says, Ha, you idiots, it was me. And he says, and he even used the devil to do God's work. <laughs> oh, 
My friends, that is an extreme example of what is going on in today's gospel. The disciples see that some people are driving out demons in the name of Jesus. And of course, their first worry is, Jesus, there's somebody who doesn't belong to our circle who is driving out demons in your name. How dare they? They They're not like us. Jesus, once again from last week, looks at them, and I'm pretty sure he says some very kind words about them in his mind, like, you idiots, you still don't understand. I'm sure Jesus is a lot more compassionate than that. But I'm pretty sure he was still very upset because he still haven't grasped the idea. See, the disciples were still stuck in a very tribalistic mentality. They couldn't see beyond themselves and what they were doing. And they were still stuck that Jesus was the Messiah of the right there and the right now. They had not seen Jesus as the Messiah of the right there and of the eternity. They were still stuck in Jesus as the momentary Savior and not the Savior of all life. This is why him and Moses, Moses, it's the same situation that's happening with Moses. They both are very upset that they think that only those people within their know are the ones that are able to be participants of God's blessing and grace. My friends, we have to open up our eyes. There is a man during the World War II era. His name was Bonhoeffer. He was a German theologian who wrote during the Nazi persecution, and he was martyred, killed by the Nazis for being a very big defender of Christianity and what it stood for. He preached about cheap grace and grace of great value. He said the regular Christian is just participating in cheap grace, you know, just the given, just the everyday. To lay one down's life and be able to be sacrificial like our Christ, he says, now that is grace of great price. So another man post-World War II, his name was Brother Raja. He started the community of reconciliation in Taizé, France. He knew that the war had left his friends very destructed, very divided, very broken. He wanted to reconcile it. But from a young age, Raja knew that if he wanted reconciliation in the world, reconciliation had to start from within himself. And then we have Dr. Pastor Martin Luther King of our modern times who was murdered for believing in non-discrimination, preaching against racism, was a victim to this nation and martyred for ideals that were very Christ-like. My friends, what do those three men have all in common? They all left great pearls of Christian teaching in our modern times, and none of those three were Catholic. Does it make any of what they taught less because they were not Catholic? Unfortunately, some would think so. Some would think because they do not share in our full practice and extension of the faith that those seeds of faith that they have planted are not worthy. My friends, Jesus today clearly is saying, For whoever is not against us is with us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water or drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. My friends, we have to stop with this very polarizing hatred of a mentality that only we are saved. That is not of Christ. That is exactly what Christ is preaching against this weekend in the gospel. He says to us, just how salvation isn't just for the right here and the right now, the disciples, but it is for eternity. It is as universal as the name that we carry as Catholics. So don't you forget for one second, Catholic is not an identity. It's the truth of the church, that we are universal church. And my friends, there is a lot that want to believe that they belong to the right religion. My friends, Jesus and Moses both teach us what right religion is. Right religion isn't just coming to church, doing your sacraments, going home, feeling that you fulfilled an obligation. 
right Christianity is exactly what Jesus is talking about. And in fact, if you notice, Jesus is more critical for the people within the church, within his disciples, than the people outside of the church who are doing a good deed in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is so critical that he literally tells them, better if he tie a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. My friends, that is what Jesus is saying to just the practicing, obedient Catholic and not the mobilized, prophetic Catholic. That same Catholic and Christian that Moses was speaking about in his scriptures. Oh, that all of us were prophets and would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on all of us. See, Moses is talking about a reality that Jesus would leave behind with us. Because we understand that between Moses and Jesus, Jesus is the fulfillment of all the prophets. And thus, all of us becoming prophets. And all of us being anointed by the Holy Spirit. This is why Jesus is so critical with us. Because essentially, we know better. We have the Spirit of God within us that speaks of Creator. That we have that prophetic character within ourselves that makes us bearers of the good news. But how many of us are exercising that? My friends, this weekend the church celebrates its refugees and immigrants throughout the world. And those people who take flight just like many prophets did in the scriptures, just like Jesus and Mary did in the scriptures, just how Jesus himself crossed borders within his scripture. The church recognizes within the immigrant and the refugee a sojourner, a forester, an alien, somebody not of this land. And the scriptures have always been very indicative to treat the stranger as if you were treating God self. My friends, do we do that with all that we encounter? Do we demonstrate to people that we belong to Christ? Or because we don't see them in our Sunday Mass, we think that they're just so wrong and so lost? Or maybe because they don't live here in our Midland, Texas, we believe that they don't belong here. My friend, the world is very polarizing these days. And so is Christ in the sense of saying, are you really a believer or do you just follow me for the right here and the right night and the right now? Are you following me for the salvation of all or for the salvation of you? Jesus is very particular on how it is that we should be saved. And it is a community that is saved. We can't by any means think to ourselves that we can be self-righteous and arrive to heaven as if it were a race. My friends, our pursuit for heaven is a marathon that is ran hand in hand with our brothers and sisters. The person who arrives alone to heaven and says, Jesus, I made it, has completely missed the point of their Christianity. There is a solidarity that the church teaches about itself. And solidarity is being in communion with those who suffer. In communion with those who have less. And to be like them. To want to suffer with them. To want to cry with those who are mourning. Who want to give to those who have nothing to give. And who walk along the side of those seeking the justice in this world. The complete opposite of what James is speaking about, about that rich man. Now, don't get caught on just the economics of the rich man. Be centered on the detail that a person who may have money may think to themselves, I have it all. Therefore, I do not need the help of anything above me, and I sure as heck don't need the help of anything below me. The rich man is selfish because he thinks that he is self-made. Not because of the economics of it all. Because, heck, the rich man could give his money to the poor and, and be okay. The rich man can go sit down at a homeless shelter and be just fine. But that homeless man that just harbors his treasures in his house and locks the door so that nobody can get into it, in the, the way of saying of his character and his person of being, 
That's the rich man that James is talking against. A very selfish, self-relying entity. A person who does not feel the cry of the poor, who does not feel the law of the Lord that is perfect. My friends, what Moses and Jesus are getting at today is to live that Christianity as if we were truly prophets. My friends, how do you allow this world to read the sacred scriptures? How do you share scriptures with other people these days? Now, let's be real. Not a whole lot of us are going to go knocking door to door sharing the gospel. We just don't do it. It's actually called prophesizing. The church isn't a big fan of it. We're about evangelization, about sharing the good news in our way of life, in our way of living. Because there is one truth that I want to bring to you today, and that's the truth that the only gospel that people will read is the gospel of yourself and how you represent Christ. Now that's a gospel and a testament that will bring great honor to his name, and thus you become those prophets that Jesus and Moses so most urge for. Thus you belong and you demonstrate that you are anointed with that spirit of our Lord, that you receive that baptism and renewed once again in confirmation. My friends, you become a living testament that people can read aloud just because of the way that you live. And how many of us demonstrate that in our day-to-day? Or is it hard because there's just so much going on in the world or I just don't agree with them? Jesus did not ask that. Jesus said, For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. But what he does speak against is those people that do not see the injustice of the world with their eyes. Oh, that they just pluck it out, is what he's saying. That do not do the good with their hands. Oh, that they just might as well cut their hands off, is what Jesus is saying. Oh, that they do not move with their feet to announce the good news of salvation. Oh, that their feet just might as well be cut off also, because you're not doing what Christ is asking you to do. That last scripture right there isn't the scrupulous notion of how good or how bad I am doing. My friends, that's simply the bare minimum. What Christ is asking here is excellence out of all of us, that with our feet, with our hands, and our eyes, we may be able to proclaim his glory. We may be able to see the injustice of the world with our eyes and bring justice to it. With our hands, we may be able to work forth in great fruits of salvation for other people. And may our feet guide us to it. Because the Lord has blessed it. This is the crucial nature of that last part of the scripture. Because that's what we were made for completely, my friends. This is why, if you're not using any of this stuff for the greater glory of God, just go ahead and throw it in the trash. Because it's not going to take you anywhere. Christ is very critical on those with inside of the church. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing around you because that ain't going to get you anywhere. What's going to get you somewhere is what you do when you mobilize, when you take the work within your hands, and when you're able to see and relate to the injustice of the world. That is what Christ is getting at today, my friends. This is the notion of solidarity that he wants us to walk with each other towards the gates of heaven. And not to say that I made it, I won the race, but to say we have arrived to what you promised us, to the glory of your kingdom. My friends, what are we waiting for? This parish does a great job at mobilizing themselves. They see the injustice and the needs of our society. We have our pantry. We have clothes that go to Ojinaga every once in a while. And we mobilize ourselves in our catechism and our outreach for our youth. And I know a lot of you become living testaments to Our Lady of Guadalupe and to the glory of His Son, Jesus Christ. But maybe there's some of us who need that better example in our life. How many people have we turned away from our church because of the way that we're acting? When people say, I don't know what Jesus is, but if it's anything like that, I don't want to be like that. My friends, let us become those living testaments to our Father that bring great honor to Him. 
Let us be those testaments that truly let us be those great prophets that Moses promised. And let us all act as we are truly anointed by our God. Amen. 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 Let us share our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our, for our sake, sake he was, was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into, into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning our prayers to our Lord, who sees all the justice and injustice of the world, we bring him our intentions. For all the priests who are ordained to serve our church, that their ministry may be fruitful and appreciated by the people whom they serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For the gift of vocations to the ordained priesthood of the Diocese of San Angelo, that good men may be drawn to love and to serve the people of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For retired priests, that they may experience God's abundant love as they walk in new paths of prayer and servanthood in retirement, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Father David Herrera and Father Freddy Perez in their ministry to the people of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that we may affirm, support, and celebrate their gifts of service to us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That we may never take the presence of our priests for granted as we cherish the celebration of Mass and are nourished by the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. For all priests who struggle with loneliness, declining health, or loss of mobility, that they may be comforted by the grace of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. That this parish family may always embrace our priests and sustain their ministry by our love and our constant prayers and our trust in their leadership, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For priests who now sleep in peace of the resurrection and for those who may die this year or this day, that God may lead them gently into their eternal reward, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Heavenly Father, you know our intentions. Give us the motivation and the courage to go forth and be prophetic to the world. We'll lift you up our intentions to Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us turn to Our Lady of Guadalupe and give us the example of evangelize the nations as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellsprings of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, our, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name. We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified O God who love the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life blessed indeed is your son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread and therefore father most merciful we ask that you send forth your holy spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and the blood of our lord jesus christ on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread. He said the blessing. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Story of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, who you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we sow forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now unto the day of eternity, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis or Pope and Michael or Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor in our burden. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ at his command. May your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. Today we remember Luis Gabriel Romero, Richard Brown, Francisco and Virginia Bonilla, and Brandon Barger. And all the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, San Juan Diego, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all the stress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. In grace you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Body of Christ. Blood of Christ. I remind you, if you cannot move, um, get out of your vehicle to receive communion, just turn on your hazard lights, and one of the assistants would help us flag you down, and a minister will be at your side. Body of Christ. For those who cannot receive sacramentally at this time, we offer this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs and glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I believe we have some announcements. Good morning. My name is Federico Reyes Romo Rivera. Everybody calls me Freddy. Uh, I'm here with the Matucayo, Father Freddy. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm from Andrews, Texas, from Our Lady of Lourdes Catholic Church. And we're having our Jamaica October the 8th and 9th. Uh, and uh, we're sell I'm selling tickets for uh, our parish. We're trying to build a, a parish hall slash uh, youth dinner for the kids, uh, for a retreat center type thing and doing repairs on our, our, our parish. And uh, we, we have a total of, the, the tickets cost 10 bucks a piece and they, there's 16 chances to win. The first prize is $5,000, the second is 2,500, third is 1,000, then there's like six at 500 and there's a, a few others there at the end. But if you're interested, uh, we'd really appreciate your help. We haven't sold very many tickets so your, your chances are really good to win. And I'm going to proclaim that somebody's going to win the $5,000 from Our Lady of Guadalupe. But anyway, I'll be across. <laughs> <laughs> Say I swear. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll be across the street over there from the parish in the parking lot if y'all would be so kind to help us out. And God bless you and thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Freddy. We also have a youth group this Tuesday at 7 p.m. in the youth hall. We're finishing up our session of At the Table, which dealt with discrimination and racism, and how is it that a Christian is supposed to confront those things in our day and age. We will be finishing it off with adoration. I've explained this already, but our, the importance for adoration for Father David and I is paramount. It's among one of our first priorities to instill in our youth a Eucharistic heart. So what better way to finish our session about seeing each other as brothers and sisters than being in front of the Creator and the Blessed Sacrament? Pray for our youth. We give you great thanks for all the support that we've had from, uh, from the Remember Joshua last week. It was a great event. Speak about an event where, we, where our brothers and sisters who are not Catholic were with us. The um, inner court worship team was with us, and, and they're friends of mine that are pastors from different churches that I uh, like to worship with at least once a month. And Mr. Carlos Zamora, that's from Fort Worth, he's Catholic and is a Catholic rapper and did a great job last week. But this you say was also really awesome, but we want to thank you for all the love and support. We also have birthdays today. We have Elizabeth Curry. Al Ariceli Reyes, Viviana Hermosillo, David Gutierrez, and there's one up here, and Perla Garcia. So if it's your birthday or if you're sharing an anniversary, honk your horn or turn your lights on, and let's give you your, your birthday blessing. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for these birthdays that are with us today. Allow their life to be a continual outpouring of your blessing as they share their life with other people. And bless these matrimonies that are here with us, Lord, that are vivid examples of the love of Christ that he had for his church. May they maintain themselves of great harmony and also bless others. May the Lord bless them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Brothers and sisters, today is Priesthood, Su Priesthood Sunday. Today is set to honor our priests, without whom the Mass could not be offered and sacraments could not be celebrated. We give thanks for their guidance, unconditional love, and for all their sacrifices. We ask you to please extend your hands towards Father Freddy as we say this special prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gifts of our priests. We especially give you thanks for Father David Herrera and Father Freddy Perez. Through them, we experience your presence in the sacraments. Help our priests to be strong in their vocation. Set their souls on fire with love for our, your people. Grant them the wisdom, understanding, and strength they need to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Inspire them with a vision of your kingdom. Give them the words they need to spread the gospel. Allow them to experience joy in their ministry. Help them to become instruments of your divine grace. 
We ask this through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns as our eternal priest. Amen. Amen. We Amen. ask you to pr please pray, pray a special rosary for all our priests. You will find the ministries in the bulletin. Thank you and have a blessed day. Thank you so much. It's always such a great pleasure. I know for both Father David and I to serve you as our family, as our children that our Lord has given us to take care of. It's always a blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. And in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>